Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mr. Pauline. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning into this video. Thank you so much. Now, for today, I'm going to be looking at another paper. And uh, before we do that, please do make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel and also consider giving this video a like if you think this video is going to be helpful to you. Now, um, the paper that we're going to be looking at is this paper, is paper number four. So we're starting from this point so we have done paper number three so if you haven't watched paper number three please do make sure that you do so hey, we are going to be starting off now okay so this is paper number four so we are going to be starting off now so what i'm just going to do i'm just going to zoom in just a bit so that you can clearly see the questions okay so number one says in an uncontrolled traffic i should give the right of way to option a oncoming traffic b traffic approaching from the road on the left c traffic approaching from the road on the right okay so remember the first road rule which says you give the right of way to traffic that is approaching from the right okay so this one is our correct answer so at an uncontrolled intersection you give the right of way to traffic that is approaching from your right now moving on i may not overtake so where should you not overtake option a on a blind rise b when traveling on a four lane traffic c near the post office so you should not overtake on a blind rise so a blind rise is what we can otherwise call a steep ascent to some other extent. So it's a steep ascent. So this one is a correct answer. So you are traveling on a road like this and you're going up. So at that point, you are not uh, encouraged or allowed to overtake. And actually at that point, you actually have a white solid line on your right. And at that point, you actually have a white solid line at the center on your side, indicating to you that you should not overtake that portion of the road. Now, let's move on to the next one. This sign indicates that. So, this is the sign that we have here. So, let me just zoom in a bit so that you can have a clear understanding of this sign. Option A, cyclists may not proceed beyond this. Well, I'm sure they wanted to say sign. So cyclists may not proceed beyond this sign, of which this one is not the correct answer. B, both cyclists and pedestrians are prohibited beyond this sign. Very true. I will explain why. C, pedestrians find alternative route with their bicycles. Well, this one is incorrect. Well, when you see this take many here and the bicycle so it's directly speaking to the pedestrian and the cyclist so it's just saying both cyclist and pedestrians are prohibited beyond the sign as you can see uh, by this red strike here so it just means that they are, are prohibited so this one is pretty simple one so this one is our correct answer here now moving on to the next at this sign i should so what should you do at this sign so this one is a stop sign so you remember i've explained to you the stop sign again but uh, uh, just for the sake of learning purposes i'm going to do it again so what should you do at a stop sign so should you stop and wait until the road is clear on both sides or you should give the right of way to pedestrians coming from the left or you give the right of way to pedestrians coming from the right so what should you do at a stop sign so what should you do at a stop sign? So definitely at a stop sign, you should stop. So you should first of all, stop. Okay, so you should stop. And you wait until the road is clear. So at a stop sign, it is mandatory that you stop. Okay, so this one is the correct answer here. Now let's move on to the next question. A yellow line on the left hand side of the road means option A may not be crossed under any circumstances B 
may be crossed to overtake traffic which is turning to the right. C may be crossed to overtake slow moving traffic. So let me tell you about the yellow line that is on the left hand side of the road. So this line demarcates the edge of the road. So you may see the, this line on the edge of the road. You are only allowed to cross this line in two circumstances. Option A, when you want to overtake traffic that is turning to the right. B, when you want to stop. Now this one is our correct answer which says it may be crossed to overtake traffic which is turning to the right. So this one is our correct answer here. Now let's move on to the next one. This sign means, so what does this sign mean? So this is the sign that we are looking at here. Is it a red cross station ahead? Is it a cross road ahead? Is it a railway level crossing? Oh, this one is a pretty simple one. It's a railway level crossing. So this one is our correct answer here. So let me just mark that one through. Now move on to the next one. This sign means, so what does this sign mean? Is it a hospital ahead? Is it a no entry or speed D restriction sign? Well, this sign, let me explain more about this sign. Now, this sign is what we call a speed D restriction sign. So, what is a speed D restriction sign? A speed D restriction sign is a sign that is found in the informative class. So, this sign is the only sign that is secular, yet it is in the informative class. So, what do you know that is common about signs in the informative class is that we know that they are rectangular, right? But this sign is secular. So, just know that this sign is in the informative class yet it is secular okay so this sign is what we call a speed d restriction sign so what it does its function is to cancel out the previously imposed speed limit okay so this sign is a speed d restriction sign now i hope i've explained that uh, now let's move on to the next one this sign indicates i may so what should you do at this sign should you expect to find a labor ahead should you pack my vehicle or not pack my vehicle? Well, as you can see, this one is a P here. So this one is a pack my vehicle. Now moving on to the next one. At this sign, I would. So what should you do at this sign? Remember, I've explained to you a stop sign. Now I'm about to explain a giveaway sign. So these one are very different. So I want you to play close attention to everything that I'm going to say. So what should you do at the, at the giveaway sign? So should you disengage gears? Should you sound the water? Or proceed with caution and stop if it is necessary? Now I want you to understand here that at the stop sign I said you have to stop. It is mandatory that you have to stop. But at a giveaway sign you stop if it is necessary. Now those are two different uh, scenarios and those are two different actions that I want you to understand. So you at a giveaway sign, you proceed with questions if both sides of the road are clear. Then you stop if they are not clear. So you only stop when it is necessary. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Now I must never change direction until I have. So what should you do enough for you to be able to change direction? So option A, should you flash my headlamps? Should I sound my hooter or oh, indicate my intention and assert that the road is clear? Well, this one is a pretty simple one. So you should never change the direction until you have indicated your intention and asserted that the road that you want to enter is clear. So this one is our correct answer. So again, I'm going to repeat. Never change direction until you have asserted that the road that you want to enter so i'm going to so i'm going to so i'm again i'm going to repeat that never change direction until first you have indicated your direction of travel also you have asserted that the road that you want to enter is clear of traffic oh that's the correct answer now let's move on to the next one I must take a habit of never setting my vehicle in motion until I have. So this question just saying that you sh before you move, you should set the habit of doing what? Option A, check the rear view mirror. B, check for petrol. C, check for children and animals around. Well, this one is a pretty simple one, okay? 
so what you should do you should check for animals and children around okay so before you set your vehicle in motion you should check for children and animals around the car underneath the car in front of the car at the back of the car all those things you need to do them